have some factoids from Crytek today as they have updated their Cry Engine roadmap, revealing some interesting tidbits about their plans for the future of the Cry Engine, or most importantly, CryEngine 5.3, which is scheduled to become available in mid-November. Now, one of the biggest features coming to this particular iteration of the engine is support for Vulkan graphics and rendering, as well as physics, and in providing improvements for Svogi, which is sparse voxel octree global illumination, which is the voxel-based GI solution that was reported on some time ago. However, their roadmap, of course, doesn't stop there. It also looks ahead to CryEngine 5.4, which in itself is planned for late February 2017, just in time for the Game Developers Conference. Its major new feature will be the addition of support for DX12 multi-GPU, although it does remain a bit murky if Crytek is referring here to the multi-adapter tech that will allow developers to use both discrete and integrated GPUs at the same time. However, another thing that is discussed in the roadmap, which will be linked in the description below this video, is what research and developments they're currently doing over at Crytek. Now, of course, what they're looking at is rather extensive, but I want to draw attention to a few interesting things, for example, 3D positional audio VoIP research, investigation into sound propagation and dynamic reverberation, support for iOS and Mac, support for speed tree, as well as cloth simulation and soft body improvements for physics, as well as a VR editor and a new cinematic pipeline. Now this does actually have a big impact potentially on Star Citizen as of course that is using CryEngine whether or not CryEngine and um, sorry Star Citizens end up using these new features well that remains to be seen probably not but it is potentially there for the developers over at Cloud Imperium to actually include some of these new features that will be coming to the engine and of course the fact that Crytek are sort of opening their engine up to VR editing and that sort of thing as well as of course improved cinematics as well as more better or much better cloth simulation and yada 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 you know one of the ways that games do sometimes fall down is the clothing on characters do kind of looks like it's glued to them a little bit because obviously the fabric doesn't really look all that natural depending on the graphics engine of course but more improvements in that area could mean, of course, just more realistic looking graphics or just nicer looking in terms of the aesthetic and that sort of thing. Even if you're not going for hyper realistic graphics, it's still nice to have, you know, cloth flapping the way it should and that sort of thing. So it's all about the details in my mind with these sorts of things. So, of course, this is not going to, you know, set the world on fire or anything like that, but it does potentially have some long reaching impacts. Of course, the CryEngine is still a very, very nice engine indeed. I look forward to seeing how these features are used by developers. That's really going to be where the money is. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.